Hello friends, welcome to yet another episode of the Indian Military Anecdotes, brought to you by Viva Life Skills trainers and consultants. Friends, today we have a very special guest, an erudite soldier, and his name is Major General Nitin Gadkari. Yes, you heard it right. Not the Union Minister. This is General Nitin Gadkari. Well, uh, General Gadkari has close to four decades of distinguished service in the army. He was commissioned in the Corps of Artillery. And to his experience, there is a huge amount of uh, specialization because he's handled all kinds of operations, counter-terrorism, counter-insurgency. Uh, he's fought battle in Siachen Glacier. Uh, he's been uh, the chief artillery officer of the entire Northern Command at a very critical juncture. And uh, peak of it all, he was the commandant of College of Defense Management in Secunderabad. So let's welcome our special guest. Uh, welcome, uh, General uh, Gadkari. Welcome to our show. It's a great pleasure having you on the show. So we will request you to you know, start narrating. Our people are really very anxious to <laughs> listen to you. So please go ahead with your uh, anecdote. Thank you, Colonel Gogate. And uh, I'm extremely happy uh, that I have the opportunity to be part of uh, your show, your channel. Thank you and so much. also thank you for uh, a very kind introduction of mine. So today I've chosen a very innocuous uh, incident, primarily for the reason to tell our audience that heroics is not only about Bollywood style uh, battles, right. <laughs> it's also about fighting day to day crisis in the army. Absolutely, absolutely. And the incident is about uh, a missing uh, soldier and a I missing see. rifle. Oh, I see. From uh, CICT. CICT is counter insurgency, counter terrorism. The area was uh, the Rajori Punch uh, area, which is uh, south of P. Panjal. And I was the artillery brigade commander who had uh, been given the responsibility of an artillery brigade shifted into an infantry role. Oh. <laughs> there was there used to be a guard which was a mixed guard of soldiers from all the units and they were looking after the assets of the artillery nice. brigade. I was the brigade commander at that point in time and I had seven units under me oh. Uh, oh. at various places. So a big size brigade. Big size brigade. So uh, the incident so happened one fine morning when I got to my office settling down, about to call my morning prayers, means calling my staff officers and checking yeah. out on what happened last evening and what is going to happen today. That's called the morning right. prayers. Right. I get a call. Now, uh, let me tell you, a call in the morning or night in a CI city is always ominous. <laughs> yes, I can understand. <laughs> very, very rarely do you get a call bearing good news. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, uh, when I got a call, I knew that something possibly may not be right. And I had one of the CEOs uh, of mine on the call. And uh, when I asked him, he said, sir, good morning. <coughs> and uh, I had to report an incident. I said, sir, what is it? And he said, sir, mm, one of my boys is missing. Oh. Now, a boy missing is nothing great because people just run away, go and right, sometimes and absent yes. without a leave. So that's not a big deal. Uh, you know? uh, yeah. So initially I thought, so what's a big deal? Uh, so he said, sir, he's missing with a personal weapon. Oh, and became serious. So <laughs> now, uh, for, for the viewers, uh, let me emphasize on the point that a loss of a personal weapon in the army is a very serious crime. So I was, I was surely alarmed. I said, a boy missing with a personal weapon. That means there are three possibilities: a boy missing, a weapon missing, or a boy missing with a weapon. Correct. As I was juggling with that, he comes up with the next layer. So this boy was from Manipur. Oh. <laughs> now, Manipur is a hot subject today. Yeah, even as you me, know, yes. <laughs> at that point in time, when all this information was getting collated in my mind, I knew that things are not right. Because Manipur, we knew, was an insurgency prone, disturbed area those days. And a boy running with a personal weapon, being from Manipur, all the possibilities came to fore in your mind. Correct. <laughs> so I asked the CEO, when did you get to know about it? So he said, sir, we got to know about this uh, incident last night. Whole night on my orders, we were searching around the base. 
also also searching around the villages nearby basically to ensure that or to be sure that the boy is not fallen asleep or gone somewhere or lying unconscious because of an injury or something like that mm-hmm. by the time it was in the by the time it was morning he said we were pretty clear that uh, none of these things have happened and yeah. the boy is absconding actually miss and that is the time i decided to give you a call so i asked him what do you propose to do mm-hmm. now when you ask somebody a question like that So he is usually uh, foxed and he says sir we will continue searching mm. which was not good enough for me yeah uh, but i told him ki look now that you reported the matter i have to report the matter too to my boss who is the doc <laughs> uh, he was expecting it but he was hoping that it will stop at my level so yeah. i told him ki look uh, it's not possible for me he wanted me He requested me. In fact, say, can it not be dealt at your level? I said, look, it is not possible because if one a yeah. personal weapon is a WET, uh, a war equipment yeah. table. War equipment. You cannot replace it. Uh, the the rifle in question was seven point six two inches. Right. So that is a deadly weapon, and it it would be a prized weapon in hands of any uh, terrorist yeah. or terrorist group, mm. more as a trophy than anything else. You know. Absolutely. So I told him, no, that is not possible. I have to report. and i told him you look uh, i'll give you up to 12 o'clock at best so if you find the weapon till 12 o'clock let me know otherwise i will have to tell the matter to the judge right. so uh, as expected by 12 o'clock no news came and i knew yeah, yeah. if they hadn't found it they wouldn't have found it then it was about 12:30 by the time i got through to my goc now uh, reporting an adverse situation to your boss not <laughs> never an easy task <laughs> never an easy task <laughs> he jumped moment i told him a personal weapon is and couple that with the fact that the boy was from manipur he lost his shirt he, his uh, anger frustration was obvious at the end of that conversation he said come what may uh, nothing get that happen so i too by now was quite frustrated and i said okay so 24 hours and i assure you the weapon will be with us okay <laughs> after i drop the phone i'm wondering how the hell did i make this promise of 24 hours Can I imagine a weapon lost in a CICT grid to find it in 24 hours? Either, yeah. either you got to be very lucky, or you got to have some very strong intelligence sources. Very. You can drop the weapon anywhere. You can drop it in an ala. You can hide it anywhere. You can pass it on to anywhere. You courier. You can give it to a, yeah. a terrorist group inside the valley, inside that It place. Making almost it impossible. Impossible. 24 hours. It's impossible. So uh, anyway, I said now what has been done has been done. Uh, I said let's get down to doing the job of finding the weapon. Mm-hmm. So the first thing I did was call the CEO and asked, uh, call him and you know get a little more detailed brief about the situation. So he came, he took his time and he came and uh, he was in my office. I asked him what time exactly did you come to know? So he said, sir, we got to know about nine o'clock at night. But what time did the soldier leave the base is not known to anyone. Mm-hmm. So we presumed uh, that the soldier had a lead time of good about three to four hours over everybody. Yeah. Then the second thing he told me that the in sources there uh, confirmed to one of his boys that they had seen one soldier taking a local bus late in the evening mm-hmm. with a hold, nothing else but a hold doll strung to his uh, shoulder, mm-hmm. uh, and he left in a local bus. And the third that his belongings at the base remained untouched. Right. So these were the three information that additional information that he gave me. So something struck me, and I asked the CEO, "Have you inquired from uh, the officer who's commanding the company base from where the actually soldier came?" Because so he said, "No, sir, we haven't inquired." I said, "The first thing you do is go and check with Major Vivek, who was the company commander there. Mm-hmm. He, if he knows anything about it." So he said, "Okay, sir, I will do that." Now sitting there, I was trying to analyze the information that was given to me, and I drew. Couple of logical conclusions, as I thought, uh-huh. were logical. Yeah. Right. One was that the soldier had not left the sector, and this was based on the fact that uh, the last bus for uh, you know, and only place where from where the soldier could have gone away from the sector was Jammu. Jammu was the nearest communication link or right. center, as they call it. Right. And the last bus for Jammu from that place to leave around five o'clock in those days. Mm-hmm. And this late evening means obviously he had not taken the you know that, and he didn't have a luggage. very much so i i suspected that he is taken a bus and most probably that bus would be going to that local bus would be going to his company base and that is what prompted me to ask the ceo right uh, the second second there was that for sure 
the reason for this boy missing and the weapon missing was very obvious that he wanted to take it out it was a deliberate act it was not an act which had happened by the way or yeah, in, yeah. in in Correct. in Correct. In, op in operations so th that was the second conclusion and the third conclusion was that if we did not catch him before he left jammu we will not be able to catch him so our best option was to catch that boy before he left jammu presuming that he has not left based on these yeah correct now yeah. all these were you know uh, conjectures speculations yeah speculations conjectures i call and all of them were based on my logical military mind correct. but i did not have any substantial evidence to back this correct so uh, you know it was a, a worrying time for me and i was waiting to hear from uh, the base so it was 3 o'clock by the time i know one heard something and i got a call from major vivek he said sir uh, i inquired and i found that some of the boys had seen this boy last evening in in the uh, in the tent which holds this uh, trunks and all that the box tent as they call it yeah. we did not pay attention to it our boys did not pay attention to it because the incident had not come to light and uh, you know yeah. they thought maybe he just come to collect some luggage and, right. and that's it Right. and thereafter he was not seen and when uh, this morning after getting the news we tried to find out we realized that he just vanished there after nobody saw him he vanished like a ghost so uh, this was uh, what should i say not good news but yet in in a way it was good for me uh, thinking that whatever i am thinking yeah seemed to be the right line yeah you were on the correct on path. the correct line so yes. uh, but another fact was now the soldier had about 15 hours of lead time if he had vanished last evening correct he would take he and now it was 3 o'clock it's almost 15 hours so he could be anywhere correct he surely would be near around jammu he wouldn't be hanging around that mm -hmm. so i said and i have i don't have too much of a time i'm short on terribly short on time so first thing i did was i call up the uh, ceo of the provost unit so i told him partner i gave him the whole story i said ki this is what has happened this boy is from manipur we suspect that this boy will be taking this taking out this arm this today if he hasn't done it and most probably he'll take a train going to north east we ruled out uh, any anyway, he taking an aircraft because aircraft yeah. he cannot take out so because the airport is so it, the only two choices we had yeah. one was train other was by a, a, a motor transport So he was very cooperative. He says, "I understand the situation." He knew that we are in C I C T. So those yeah. days there was a bond homie which existed, you know. So he says, "No problem. What I'll do is I'll put my people on the railway station on every T C P road going out of Jam. Right. So that they check, uh, you know, suspected. And he, since he was Manipuri, it was probably easy to understand. Easy to probably identify. That, that way. Yes. So he promised me that. The second call I made was to the. MCO MCO is the movement control officer yeah. MCO Jammu mm -hmm. I repeated the story to him and I said partner tell me which uh, which are the trains to uh, northeast mm -hmm. uh, in the evening so he said sir there are two trains which go to guwahati uh, guwahati or northeast mm -hmm. and one is at about 7 o'clock or 9:30 mm -hmm. and he said sir no worry i will monitor but i do not have personnel with me i can at best give you one person i said i don't require personnel you give me one person points man and i'll do the needful and uh, allow him to stay with my guys he said sir done the third thing i said i called that ceo of the unit uh, which had lost his weapon i said now do something either send somebody pronto or get a jco and few men on the station who can recognize the boy so yeah. nobody else recognizes the boy correct correct right. now this is where we got lucky uh, the ceo yeah. but luckily he had some attached people in the jammu transit camp for some reason oh i see very very well. that was a lucky break he so says i have i have that. i will manage so he got the jco and few people he told them okay be on the uh, railway station he briefed them and all that mm. so having done all this now uh, i had tried my level best to put things in motion and yet i was thinking to myself ki look this is a hunch <laughs> uh, one doesn't know how the soldier is going to behave whether he is already taken the weapon out whether he is going to take a private taxi mode whether he is going to hide in the sector for few days because if he is intelligent enough he will also understand that somebody will report people at will some point in time yeah. people will come after him <laughs> obvious get away points mm. uh, so you know it was a cat and mouse game and it was cat a, and mouse game and yeah it was a game of uh, who who uses his brain better than the other guy correct 
so anyway nothing we could do so we said okay 6:30 it was like an ambush which was you know put in place ambush on a railway station as you call the ceo briefed everyone how to be right. there and all so right. about uh, 6:30 they were in places and about 7 o'clock and we are now waiting to hear something and as you know in such crucial uh, situations every minute looks like an hour for you you know so waiting 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 till 7:30 and no news came so everyone was dejected because the train was to go at 7:15 if i'm not wrong so we had given extra 15 minutes nobody rang up nobody gave a call so obviously it meant that nothing had happened so we called up the jco he said no so no news not nothing no so now we knew that the train first train has gone either without the guy or he has escaped the dragnet yeah yeah and if the second thing was possible we were sunk but yet our hopes were pinned on to the next train next. that is the 9:30 train mm-hmm. so then i briefed the jco don't be in an obvious place you know camouflage yourself Correct. keep your boys hidden make the mc or the front put him put him in a uniform tell him to look out on the platform tell the cmp to disperse themselves one on a gate one on each so all these you know Correct. last minute briefing yeah. one did yeah. and then uh, once again waiting to us and uh, come 9 o'clock to men waiting for the next train right by 9:15 it was unbearable so yeah, you know, <laughs> you know th- those who been in the situation only will realize how only they will realize fast right? time <laughs> yeah uh, so 9:15 i gave a call to this uh, the jc over there asked him ki saab koi khabar he said saab ji koi khabar nahi hai yahan to bahut bheed hai <laughs> पता ही नहीं लग रहा है हजारों लोग हैं सभी जवान लगते हैं <laughs> बड़ा मुश्किल <laughs> लग रहा मुझे तो इन इन टिपिकल जैसे लैंग्वेज फिर सब साफ आप आप डटे रहो देखते रहो ना बस ये है कि आप जरा छुप के काम करो और एमसीओ को बोलो देखो सेम थिंग आई रिपीट इट सो 9:15 बिकेम 9:30 ऑन दैट डे एंड वी वर ऑल बाय 9:30 वी वर ऑल नाउ यू नो विद मरोस फेसेस So yeah. about 9:35, I got up from them to go to the office to wind up and get back to my quarters, kind of a thing. At 9:40, uh, my mobile rang, and that voice blared like you know loudspeaker, you know. Sabji, pakad liya. I see. So can you imagine? Pakad liya, and we retrieved the gun. Oh, weapon we mil gaya. Yeah. You know. Then he narrated and why he took time is. Then he narrated how that thing whole happened. He says, "Sir, about you, sir, talk to you. उसके बाद भी नौ बीस के आसपास जो ना मैं देख रहा था तो मैं बंदा ऐसे ही छोटा सा था हमारे यूनिट टाइप जो नॉर्थ ईस्ट के होते हैं वो बल्कला हुआ पहना हुआ था सभी मतलब ये days of the cold तो बल्कला हुआ में भी क्या मुफ्ला जो चेहरा वाला तो कुछ दिख नहीं रहा था ही बड़ा probably escape my attention also लेकिन तब मैंने देख उसके शोल्डर पे ना एक ऐसा होल्डॉल से लटका हुआ है और वो नॉर्मल नहीं ऐसे ना लंबा लंबा सा कुछ यू नो प्रोड्यूरिंग टाइप था जट आउट नीचे निकल रहा था तो मुझे एकदम सस्पेशन हुआ ये ऐसा कैसा होल्डॉल है तो मैंने अपने बंदे को बोला कि देख क्या दिख रहा है तो बोलता सर ये डरता है राइफल का बैरल की तरह लग रहा लग रहा है बांधा हुआ सी दैट वॉज द क्यू दैट वी गॉट and we informed the एमसीओ वॉज ऑन द स्टेशन टू लुक आफ्टर दैट टू गो आफ्टर दैट गाय तो वो एमसीओ वेंट टू हिम and you know as if he is doing a duty as the soldier kaha ja rahe ho ticket hai nahi reservation hai nahi and he guided him ki is dabbe mein chad da ya bheed kam hai it was a pre arranged thing you know as for like isme chad jana tum log now everyone is in league the jco his men the they are in the waiting there the cmp okay <laughs> so uh, as he was going into that compartment the jco ran and grabbed this uh, collar you know coat whatever it is so that fellow uh, Turned around, and he recognized the JC. He made a unit of bandha. Now yeah. that boy was smart. So what he did was, he threw the rifle. I see. For rifle fake, you know, in JC, uh, in a desire to catch the rifle first so that the weapon is not lost, he threw the rifle. He caught the rifle. The bandha ran away. I see. Now everyone was trying to recover the weapon and the boy, but because of all these briefing and pre-arrange, really, uh, yeah. you know, thing, the CMP had not lost sight of this. Uh, so the CMP boy rang up the other CMP was on the other platform and said, "Yeah, staircase pe aaja idhar hi udhar chhod raha hai." So sure. they ran from this side. That fellow came from the other staircase, or oh. staircase, or wo jo bridge platform hota hai, uske upar usko pakad liya, you know. Dono taraf se this boy, a tough North North Eastern 
Soldier he gave a big fight, you know, and there was a scuffle. But finally, in, in, amidst all part. this, you know, uh, drama Bollywood style, the soldier was absolute caught. Bollywood style. Yeah. <laughs> well, typical Bollywood style. Yeah. And the weapon was recovered. Then they handcuffed him and then got him. And uh, th- that's the time that JCU gave a call to me. So it took more than 10-15 minutes for this drama to unfold. You know, ah, correct, I, correct. I'm telling you in five five seconds correct. or something. You know, it took a long time. And every moment would have been tense, you know, bhag jai. The rifle was recovered, at least one part, but the boy also should have been caught. Yeah. So dono ko pakad liya. Uh, so finally, the, when the boy was caught, he and I then at 10 o'clock. Uh, you could call the act picked up the telephone and <laughs> and, and that was before 24 hours. And light hope that GOZ say will say well done. Anyway, well done. <laughs> but at least I had a victorious smile on my face and I said, yeah, absolutely. within 24 hours of the delivered uh, you know, absolutely. time, we have delivered the promise. I see. Uh, and in the court martial, he accepted the fact that he deliberately stole the weapon. He wanted to take it to Manipur because he wanted to join one of the insurgent groups. I see. And he said very categorically that a Personal weapon of an Indian army was a sure shot ticket for getting into the insurgent ranks. Right. And that is why he stole the weapon to become part of that. Right. Ultimately, he was court martial was thrown out. The whole uh, story ended. Very, very interesting story. And the way you narrated made it more special. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, what do you think, General, uh, is to learn out of this? This kind of. Yeah, a- most important is one is that in CICT, Every day is a challenge and you have to take that challenge uh, seriously. You cannot, uh, so CICT cannot be compared to any uh, normal day, peacetime soldiering or even uh, wartime is different. Second is, when you have independent command, away people from all, all places, it is very essential to keep a tag of every individual because we had, we lost the soldier initially a lead time of three and later a lead time of 15 hours. We yeah. should have lost. Personal discipline. And personal motivation or personal record of soldiers is very essential. Very How did this escape the unit's you know, scrutiny that a boy is wanting or inclined to join an insurgent group? Yes. And of course, the most important lesson is uh, yeah, you need to think ahead and put the right men for the job to, the right, to do the right thing. Absolutely. If you do that, then you will get results. That, that is the biggest lesson I can get. Of yeah. course, other thing about coordination, interagency, uh, you, you know, cooperation. All that is very putting important. putting things in place. That's all, of course, this is a yeah. micro. But at at a macro level, to think ahead and put people in the right resources, the right place is is yeah. the best lesson that we got. Right, fantastic, uh, General. This was a great story, very very interesting, and I'm sure that not only our civilian friends uh, would uh, learn a lot of things from this story. But even the serving uh, soldiers and the officers have something to take from this. So uh, thank you very much. And, and before you leave, uh, General, let me tell our viewers, uh, I'm sorry I missed out something very important. Uh, the General is a prolific writer and he writes on various subjects, very varied subjects. And uh, you should uh, you know, look into his blog. Uh, we will give the details of his blog in this video. So please do visit his site and you will enjoy that. So thank you, General. Thank you once again for uh, coming to our show. It's been a great pleasure. Thanks a lot and all the best to you. Thank you very much. Thank you.